Welcome back guys, this is Crayfish Carl again with the Pong tutorial series. Now before we continue, I want to show you something really quick. If we go over to the folder where we've been saving our game, you'll see a file that's called .001. Now, what this file is, it's a backup. So in the unlikely event that your something goes wrong with your game, you can just go back to the version that's timestamped right here. But anyway, let's continue. We need to make our second player. To do that, let's go ahead and right click on our first paddle and press clone object. It's going to ask you how many clones you want to make if you enter in the rows and columns, but we just need one for now, so let's just press OK. Now we have our second paddle, and it's been automatically renamed Paddle 2. Let's go ahead and drag it over to the other side of the screen, so right about here. And let's go ahead and change the color of it and make it look a little bit different. Let's double click on it. I'm going to make mine red. And as I said before, you can make your paddle look like anything you want. In fact, actually, it doesn't even have to be a paddle. It can be something crazy. And in my first Pong game, it ended up being a hedgehog. But now we're done. We got our red looking paddle. Let's go ahead and press OK. Now we have our blue paddle and our red paddle. We can run our game and it actually works. Mostly, but you'll notice that our red paddle moves exactly the same as our blue one. We don't want that. We need to give it a different set of controls just so that it's a little bit more challenging. Let's go ahead and X this out. The first thing we need to do is make sure your second paddle is selected and go to movement options, which is a blue running guy over here. Now look for player and change this to player 2. Now this is not quite enough because by default Click Team Fusion has player 2 also using the arrow keys. To change that, let's go ahead and click on the name for our game up here. Right where it's, or in my game it says Tutorial Pong, but it'll be whatever you saved your game as. We're going to Look for runtime options. Down here at the properties toolbar where everything changed, you'll see a bunch of options relating to the overall game itself, but the one we're interested in is default controls. Let's go ahead and press edit. Now we need to click on this second X right here. That's for the player 2's controls. And let's go ahead and change them where it says up arrow we're going to choose a new key to control with. I'm going to pick W. And they're down. We click that. And I'm going to choose S. And now let's press OK. And then we press OK again. So now when we run our game, you'll see that you're able to control the second player differently. And we have an actual functioning Pong game now. But we can spice it up a little bit more. So how about let's add something to keep track of score. Let's go ahead and exit out. Now there's a lot of ways to keep track of the score, but here's how I'm going to show you. We're going to use the counter object. Let's so uh, we can just right click anywhere and select insert object. We're going to look for the counter object and there's a lot of ways to find it. You can you use any one of these filters. Counter is going to be under data. You can also search for it under this search bar right here, or you can just scroll down directly to where it says counter. And let's press OK. And we can place it anywhere. So we're just, this is going to be player one's counter, so let's just place it right here. Now, what a counter does, it's basically a number. It, you can store whatever numbers you need to right there. Let's go ahead and look at the options. If we go to the settings tool, right, or the settings tab over here, you'll see that you can change it from numbers to other types. You can make it hidden and invisible. You can also make it like a health bar. You can make it into text, which you can edit with a font editor. But for now, I'm just going to leave as the default numbers. In fact, if we double click on the counter and edit it, you can actually see that you can edit each individual digit do the zeros, ones, twos, so on. You can even do the minus, plus, the decimal, and the E for scientific notation if you're 
numbers for whatever reason have to go that high. But I'm just going to leave it as the default. Let's go ahead and X this out. But as good practice, we should rename it from the default name. Let's hit rename. We're going to call this player one score. Now, let's go ahead and clone this counter. Let's right click and press clone object. We're going to make the second player score now. So let's go ahead and press OK and drag this to the other side of the screen. Now you see the name's kind of weird now. It says player one score two. This is because the by default the click team fusion just puts a it increments a number at the end of everything. So let's go ahead and rename this again to something a little more cohesive. We're gonna call this player two score. And press OK. Now to get these scores to actually work, we need to go into one of the events editors. We can let's go into the ball because this is where it's involved the most. Let's click on the ball. Click on the events over here in the properties window. Click on behaviors and press edit. You'll see that the the conditions we added for the ball bouncing around are still here. We're going to add some new ones. So when the ball leaves to the left or the and it leaves to the right, it's going to add to the counter. We can't use this one because this one says left or right, so we need brand new conditions. Let's press new condition. We're going to right click on the ball, highlight position, test position the ball. First, let's make it so that when it goes to the right, let's press the right arrow right here and press OK. So the ball leaves to the right. What's going to happen? The counter is going to increment. But we don't see our counter here. We need to import it again. Let's go ahead and right click. Hover over player one score. Make sure the tooltip says player one score because these two icons look very similar. Say so add to counter. And now this is a bunch of, this looks very scary. It's mostly for higher level programming like stuff, but all we need is just one. It's going to add one to the counter. And now let's press OK. Next, we need to check to see if the ball leaves to the other side. Just press new condition. Right click on the ball. Highlight position. Test position of the ball. Let's click to see if it leaves to the left and press OK. We need to import our other counter, so let's right click on this last column right here. Right click on the counter, say add to counter, and we press 1. And now let's press OK. Now when we run our game, you'll see that when the ball goes to the other side of the screen, it increments the counter. So I'm just going to let myself deliberately miss that ball. And now it works a little bit better. In the next video, we're going to add some fancier things, such as a title screen, it's a game over screen. So we're going to make it so that if you reach a certain number of points, you'll win. But for now, we're going to save our game. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.